Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another Q&A meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of charity, morality, and meditation. Everyone who is interested is welcome to join. Please submit your question in one at a time. Please be brief and precise. And if this is your first time, please let me know where you come from. Also, please let me know how's the video and audio. Is it okay or not? I will start reading your comments and your questions. Kenneth Tan Kiba, greetings Ajahn. May you be well and happy. Thank you. Ayi, Namasakan Tanajan. Chek Ling Tan, greetings dear Tanajan. Audio and video are clear. Thank you. Kenneth Hunt, good morning Tanajan. You are clear. Thank you. Andy Fu, greeting Pante. Alvin Lee, Wei Peng. Good morning, Tanajan. Satu, Satu. Video and audio okay. When who is in? Satu, Satu. Alexander Aroka, Satu, Satu, Satu. Audio is good, image is sharp. Thank you. Sini Jira, audio and video are clear. Thank you. Jane Austen, greeting Tanajan, thank you in advance for this Nama talk. You're welcome. Liberty Lee, Bhante, bright and clear today. Awesome, Satu. Thank you. Namasagan, with my respect, audio and video are clear. Thank you for your teaching. You're welcome. Adi Aha. Satu. How can we keep mindfulness and clear heart on traffic bus? If you're not driving, if you're just a passenger, then just close your eyes and watch your breathing or recite a mantra. Bhutto, Bhutto. Don't pay attention to any other things around you. If you don't have to drive, if you're just a passenger, then you can just close your eyes and concentrate on your breathing or recite the mantra, Bhutto, Bhutto. Bilim Suki Hoto, Tanajan, Satu, Satu. Adeline Chin, good afternoon, Tanajan. Happy to be listening in. Happy to hear from you. Hong Bi Chin, following nothing to ask. Happy Mark Well. Thank you. Chompo MT Satu Satu.
James Ong, greetings Sajan, greetings to you. Mandala Shi, thanks for your answer. Wish we can do our best on traffic home, on traffic time. If you can just close your eyes and just watch your breath, your breathing, uh, just recite the mantra, you'll find that traffic isn't all that bad because your mind is not in a hurry. You might become calm and patient. So you can be stuck in traffic and you won't feel bad. You'll feel peace and feeling good. Eric, Eric CK, Satu Satu, Ayi Tanajan, my friend said when we listen to the Dhamma, we should do while meditating. If we don't understand the language, then our mind will absorb it and our mind will understand the essence of the lecture. Is that true? Can the mind understand what is being taught even though we do not understand the language that the monk speaks? No, the mind will not be able to understand the language, then it will not understand what is being taught. But it can absorb the calmness from the talk, from the sound of the talk. If you just focus your mind on listening, even though you might not understand what you listen, if you just pay attention to the sound and not let your mind go thinking about other things, your mind can become calm and peaceful. This is the method of samadhi or samatha, using the Dhamma talk as the object of concentration. Instead of having to recite the mantra bhutto or having to watch your breath, you just listen to the Dhamma talk. You use the Dhamma talk instead of using the the breath or the mantra, and you get the same result. Maybe it's easier because with the mantra you have to recite, with the breath you have to focus and watch, but with the Dhamma talk you just listen. So it's more, more simple, easier, and you can calm your mind this way. For beginners, sometimes they find it easier just to listening to Dhamma talk. To, to meditate instead of reciting mantra or watching the breath. But you will not understand, you will not get wisdom. You can only get wisdom when you understand the, the language, the meaning of the Dhamma that you, that you are listening to. Uh, saying greeting Pajan and everyone. May all beings be free from mental and physical suffering. Thank you. Rusli Alamsaya Namasagan dear John. Andy Lam Satu Tan Muiki Ajan greeting from Pinam. Gita Tan Satu Satu. Tan Mui Ki, is Dhamma investigation different from Dhamma reflection? Thank you. It's the same thing. You reflect or you investigate so you can understand the Dhamma that you are, you are study, studying, such as Anijja, Dukkha or Anatta. You have to use analysis, like the body. If you want to find out is the body uh, Anijja, temporarily or not, then you have to look at the, 
the, the, the way how the, the body develops. The body develops, then one day it will start developing, and then it will fall apart. So this is anicca. This is investigation or reflection. I.e. question number two. When Katina Dana, the robes received by the monks were too much, is it wrong if the robe is kept by the temple administrator and so again to the devotee, and the money were used for the operation of the monastery? If the monks have enough robe already and it just become a surplus, then yes, you can sell it if you want to exchange it for money to pay for other expenses. But you should not really sell it. You should just make it available. If some lay people wants to do some charity and wants to uh, give ropes to monks, then you can give the extra or surplus monk or sell, sell it to the, to the devotee. But you should not make it a, as a commercial thing in which you set up, uh, you know, a advertising that we have room for sale or something like that. But you can make available to people who sometimes they cannot, are not convenient for them to bring stuff to the temple. So they might ask if you have anything that we can offer to the monks. And you say, yes, we have robes, we have some other requisites, which monks don't, uh, which monks, uh, you don't have to say that, just say, yes, you have these things. And if they like, they can buy or, or just donate, whichever way you want to deal with it. Liberty Lee, Pante, my family intend to convert me into Christianity as they still believe Buddhism, Mahayana, and Vajrayana are filled with crazy mantra and hidden sexual teachings, and even baby ghost harvesting and black magic curse. But they refuse to believe our original Theravada Buddhism teaching are just to calm our mind and let go of our of hindrances. Bad reputation here in Malaysia. Kindly advise her to. Well, if you don't want to be converted, you just tell them that you, you don't want to be converted. If they force you to convert, you just do it. Then do it as a matter of courtesy but you don't have to stick to the teaching of Christianity if you want to stick to the teaching of Buddhism. You just do it out of courtesy, so they don't feel bad. But behind their back, they don't know what you do. They don't know that you meditate. They don't know that you study Dharma books or Dharma talk, listen to Dharma talks or keep the five precepts. This is your this is your personal thing that no one can force upon you. But if you live in a community where you are forced to to adhere to a certain standard, then you might have to do it as a as a courtesy or just as a an act. Just to and prevent you from getting into trouble with other people. Pasana Chunasevi, good morning, Pajan. I've just finished reading your book, My Way, for a third time. Thank you very much for the way that you suggest in, in, in the book. Big, big, Satu, Eli Hassan, good. 
Good day, Tanajan, audio and video clear. Thank you. I.e., question number three. When another person cannot make arms or cannot give money directly to the Sangha, Piku, but has someone else to pass on, does the person have to write his or her name on the fund? Will the Kama Vipaka be different if we give it directly or indirectly? No, you don't need to, to write your name on the fund. And the Dhamma Kama Vipaka is the same whether you give it directly or indirectly. The only difference is if you give it yourself directly, you might you might be able to listen to Dhamma talk from the from the monks that you give the dana to. That you want that is something you will not get if you don't go yourself. But the the the, the merits from giving is the same, whether you give it directly or indirectly. Jane Austen, Tanajan, some Buddhists I know ask the Triple Gem to bless a very sick person. Is that such a thing possible? I mean, you can bless someone, but it doesn't mean that you can transfer that blessing to that person. The, the blessing is just something that is is something beyond the the person who gives the blessing. I can give you the blessing that, such as may you be well and live forever, but that it will not be possible because it, what is true that depends on conditions. If condition is conducive for that person to get well, that person will get well, even though it, even though the triple gem have given the blessing or not. So, so to answer your question, no, it's not possible. But just people just believe that it makes them feel better, that they have done something for a sick person. Tan Mui Ki, question number two, our defilement can be cut off at the contact point when our five faculties are balanced, right? It's not the five faculty has to be balanced. It's when you have wisdom or mindfulness. If you have mindfulness, strong mindfulness, you can cut your defilement temporarily. If you have wisdom, you can cut your defilement permanently. So you have to develop a lot of mindfulness and a lot of wisdom. A lot of wisdom means you have to see the, the three characteristics of existence all the time. I.e., question number four, when meditation and pain in the leg arise, what should I do? Keep trying to hold on until I can't hold on, hold it any longer and stop my meditation or change the position of my legs why stay focused on the object and continue meditating? You should stay focused on the object of your, medi of your meditation and ignore the pain. Don't move, don't do anything with the body. Leave the body alone. If you find that watching your breath is not possible to keep your mind calm and not worry about the pain, then you might have to switch to a mantra or to do some chanting. Keep chanting, keep reciting the mantra, even though you might feel painful in the leg. As long as you don't pay attention to the pain and only pay attention to your mantra, your mind can become calm and let go of the pain and will be able to stay with the pain undisturbed. So keep reciting the mantra. The best way to recite mantra of chanting don't stop until the mind becomes calm and let go of the pain. Being 10, good afternoon, Bhante. May I know when a person obtains fruition, will that person go back to the no fruition again? No. Once you become a sodapana, you will not return back to a, a lower status. 
you will become a self tapana all the time forever until you you until you move up higher to the next level until eventually reaching the highest level once you get there then you will not lose it you will, you have it forever Will a person gain fruition? Will that person stay 100% can let go his body before death? Yes. Will the fruition person still have not fully clear all their bad karma? There are four levels of fruition. See? When you reach the first level, you have cleared, you have Uh, will the fruition person still have not, not fully cleared all the bad karma? You cannot clear the bad karma or the good karma. You will have to, you have, you will have to face this fruition sooner or later. But with being enlightened, you will not be affected by the effect of the good or bad karma. Liberty Lee, Pante, an old friend of mine, recently has committed suicide due to some financial issue. Is there anything I can help him and his grieving family? Well, with the family, you can help them if you can help them financially. Give them some money, give them support, material support. But for the one who passed away, if he if he commits suicide, then you cannot even share the merit that you make, that you make to, to him because he will not be able to receive it. You will just have to pay the consequence of his action until he, until he is free from that consequence and be, return and born again as a human being. Jovu just come back from Katina celebration in Pinam, MBMC Buddhist Meditation Center. Wish everyone can be enlightened soon and may Bhante be healthy, Sukihotu. Buddhi Buddham Saranangachami. Thank you. Jane Austen, when a person becomes a Sotapana, who he or she know they are so I Sotapana. They may not know the name of being of Sotapanna, but they will know that they have uh, let go of destroy the fetters, the, the first three fetters. They will have no doubt in Buddha Dhamma. They will have no doubt in in the law of karma, and they will let go of their attachment to the five khanda. But they may not know the word Sotapanna if they didn't study the scripture. Lamsat JW, Namasagan Bhajan, thank you. Pauling Soon, Satu Satu. Eva Chakma, Satu. Once you become a Sotapanna, you will not be afraid of death, or of sickness or pain. Your mind has let go of the attachment to the body. So it knows the body is not the mind. The mind is not affected by the death or by the sickness or the pain of the body. And it has no doubt in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. And it has no doubt in the law of karma. So I will keep the precept for the rest of his or her life.
and not be attached to any type of rituals. Will not do any rituals to make them feel better, uh, uh, or erase the, the bad karma. Because you cannot erase the effect of your good or bad karma. So you will keep doing good karma and and never do any bad karma from that point onward. <coughs> Lien Lim Satu, Nam Lin Satu. Jean Austin, thank you for the explanation. You're welcome. Check the intent. A Sotapanna will never be reborn in the woeful plane because they keep the precept, yes. They, they know the effect of, of doing the bad karma will send the mind to the lower realm of existence. So they would rather die than protect their life by breaking the precept, for instance. They will not go fishing or killing animals for food, they would rather accept death if that's, the, if that's the choice they have to make. Because you have to die anyway, whether you die of starvation or something else. But by breaking the precept, you are sending your mind toward the woeful state. And that you will not want to do. It's not worth paying for the price of life in exchange for going to the, a woeful state of existence. Sorry, Ajahn, I accidentally pressed the send button before I finished typing. That's okay. Liberty Lee Pante should be exposed fake teaching in Buddhism, Mahayana, Varaja, Yana. Will they be punished under karma vipaka sattu? Well, it's not easy for us to prove that they are fake or not. So it's better just to leave them alone. If you feel that it's not real, it's not good, then just don't follow it. No need to expose, no, no need to make a mission out of it, that's what I mean. Just know for yourself. And if people ask you, you can tell them that. You don't want to create any bad karma. You don't want to create any enemies. Because you might be wrong. They might be right and they may, might be right, but you might be wrong in thinking that they are fake. Unless you are fully enlightened, then you will know for yourself. And if even, even if you know, you don't want to do anything either. But you can tell the right teaching what it's like. And then people who listen can compare the, the teaching themselves. It's not good to create any animosity or enemies. We should learn to live peacefully together. Shun Wei, Namasagan Lompo. How to avoid to be attracted to thinking 
when meditate, I always go into thinking without realizing. Only after some time that I realize. That's because you have weak mindfulness. So you have to develop stronger mindfulness by being more mindful before you meditate. During the, during the period when you don't meditate, you should keep developing mindfulness by either constantly reciting the mantra Bhutto Bhutto as you go about doing your things. Or you can focus on what you do, what your body is doing, and stop thinking about other things. If you can do this, then when you meditate, you'll find that you, you, your thought will, become, not, will not be coming out. So develop more mindfulness. Develop a lot more mindfulness as possible, as much as possible. So that when you meditate, you, your thought will not come, come in to interfere with your meditation. Chi Chin Chuan, dear John, is joking around and consider wrong speech. It's considered, yeah, not right speech. Yeah. It's considered idle chatting. Liberty Lee, thank you, Pante Satu. Ah Seng Chun Wei, stay in present moment. When in present moment, my is unable to think. Suli, is the nature of mindfulness up and down, even for the enlightened ones. Not with, not with the enlightened ones. The, the enlightened ones can maintain mindfulness all the time. Only the unenlightened be, being that still have fluctuation with mindfulness. Chun Wei, thank you, Long Paul. You're welcome. Paul Lim Soon, a practitioner, only stay in Samantha. Meditation, not further. Practice vipassana. Can Ajahn explain? Well, if you only do samatha, pavana, you only go get the halfway to to become enlightened. You cannot become enlightened with just samatha vipassana. You need to develop vipassana, pavana, in order to become enlightened. Samatha pavana can only give you jhana, give you calm but it cannot enlighten your mind. You need wisdom. Chun Wei, thank you. Long Paul, you're welcome. Claudia Srina. Good morning from Germany, Tanajan. Today I have a question. Is it proper for a Buddhist to donate the body to the science after death. For myself, I think it is not necessary to spend money for a funeral. I don't need a, a grave and, and seriously think and seriously think of give my body after death to the science. Thank you for your teaching. There's no rule prohibiting Buddhists from giving your body after death. But it doesn't contribute any any merit or not considered to be a good karma. I, I mean, the person who gives the body after death does not reap the fruit of the good karma. If you, if you want to reap the fruit of the good karma, you have to give your body when you are still alive, like donating your organs then you will have done good karma. This is a form of charity, and you can reap the fruit, the fruit of your good karma. But when you give it after you die, you don't know anything after you die, whether this body was given or not. So you, you will not be able to reap the benefit of your giving. If you want to reap the benefit of your giving, you have to do it when you're still alive, like donating blood 
or giving up your kidney, one of your kidneys, or one of your eyes to someone. Then you can, then you will know that you have done something good for other people. Then you will reap the consequence of your good karma. Being ten, pante, may I know how is samadhi? Samadhi is when the mind stops thinking and you find, feel peace, at ease, and happy, empty, nothing in, no emotion left in the mind. The, the mind feels light and easy. Body missing, but the breathing is very, very little. Am I right? Sometimes you don't notice about the body or the breathing at all. If you still notice, then it means you haven't yet reached complete samadhi yet. You are reaching partial samadhi. You don't stop breathing. The body continues to breathe, but you just don't. You just don't. You just don't pay attention to the body. But the body seems to be out of your your recognition field. Chi Chin Chuan, do beginner meditator should also practice wisdom, or should just learn mindful practice. These are steps you have to do one at a time. First, learn to develop mindfulness. Once you have mindfulness, learn to meditate for peace and calm. Once you have done that, then you go to the third step, which is the development of wisdom. Liberty Lee, Pante, only the original five Nikaya from Emperor Soga Pillars are the most accurate teaching of Lord Gautama. Is this correct, Pante? I don't know. All I know is that the 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 first discourse is is It's very useful for the practice of eradicating, eradicating all of your defilements and suffering, which is the Namajaka Pavatana Sutta and the full foundation of mindfulness. It's a very good sutta for the practice of mindfulness, samadhi, and wisdom. NJ Tik Ho Ho Satu Satu Paul Ling Sun Kanajan explains simple way to practice vipassana by thinking of the death of your body all the time, or the unpleasant parts of your body all the time. This is called the practice of practice of vipassana to see the true nature of your body and your body will get old, get sick and die and your body on, and everybody's body is not good looking not attractive it has a lot of not, and not, not attractive parts like the inner parts of the body like the organs and the skeleton Ananda Ti Satu Satu Pauling Soon in Vipassana meditation alone practice is itself samadhi able to arise. It's possible but it's difficult. It's more difficult than using mindfulness to to make samadhi to arise. Because all you have to do is just recite a mantra or you can just watch your breathing. But if you use vipassana, you have to know how to, to, to investigate the nature of the mind, of, of, the pro, of the problem that you are, that is causing you to not be able to use mindfulness to calm your mind. So you only use vipassana to, to, 
to bring samadhi only when you have problem, when you have stress, and you have to get rid of the stress. So you have to use vipassana to study the nature of stress or discussing the stress. And if you know the cause, and if you can let go of the cause, then you can bring the mind back to calm, to samadhi. But otherwise, if you don't have any stress, then it will be not possible to use vipassana. You should use mindfulness instead. Christine Kohe, Satu, Satu. Lochu Boye, Satu, Satu. Surely, if donating my body to science after my death has been useful to the science, that's the thinking of being useful and happy with it is a good karma. Or is it just my ego because I don't sacrifice anything while I'm still alive? That's right, it's just your ego. It's not real because you don't know whether you have actually given anything when you die. So you have to do it when you're still alive if you want to reap the benefits of your giving, not after you die. Like money, you just write a will, you just write a, write a will and give it to people as inheritance. But you don't know that actually, this that money actually go to the person or not. So if you want to, you have to do it while you're still alive to reap the, the, the fruit of your good karma. Yes, you don't sacrifice anything when you are alive. You sacrifice only after you die, which, which means you don't sacrifice anything at all. So if you want to sacrifice, you should do it while you're still alive. Then you can feel the, the, the good feeling arising from giving things away, especially something you like, you love, like parts of your body. Any lamb, satu, satu. Nabiti Namasagan Ajan Tanwiki Question number three Why I feel sukha and pity when listening to mom chanting, but I don't understand the meaning of chanting. That's because your mind becomes calm. When the mind becomes calm you can you can feel good, you can feel happy, and you can have raptures. This is the effect of mindfulness, listening to the chanting and not thinking about anything. I.e., question number five, are the enlightenment people must help jhana first from samatha pavana, then they use vipassana, Pavana to get enlightened. Yes, you need you need the support of samatha, pavana, or jhana. You need a calm and clear mind to be able to see the truth clearly. If not, then your mind will be clouded by delusion and you will not be able to see the truth clearly. So you need first to clean your mind with jhana. Once your mind becomes clear, then you can see things as they are not what your delusion tells you. A 
a person using Chinese character Satu Satu. Calling soon. Why daytime difficult to meditate than early morning? That's because during the daytime your mind has to do a lot of thinking. So you find it difficult to stop it from thinking. Why in the morning you have rested, you might have stopped thinking for when you sleep. So when you wake up, you'll find it easy to meditate. Ah Singh, thanks for clear explanation on dana and dana after death. Calling soon, what is the feeling person who has enlightened? You feel happy. You let go of everything. You no longer be attached to anything. Because you see everything doesn't belong to him. You cannot keep them forever. Bruce Lee Alamsia. Question from Indonesia. Once there was a terrorist attack in Jakarta. My police friend asked for urgent blood donation for some victims. Police, civilians, and the terrorist accomplice would demand from donating my blood to all these three types of victims are considered equal. Yes, when you give, you don't. If you give on the basis of, of humanity, you don't care whether the person who received is good or bad person. You give because you want to save their life. So in this regard, you give regardless of whether the person is good or bad. This is the, 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 the lowest way, of, the, the basic way of giving is for the sake of maintaining life. So you give whether a person is rich or poor, good or bad. You give because you want to help them live. So the merit is the same. Does it, does it better? Does it better to prioritize the worst critical person, regardless of the person is criminal or not? Thank you for my very much. Well, as far as prioritizing is concerned, that will have to depend on the, the doctor or the person who administered the help. But as far as, as the person who gave the blood, you don't have to prioritize, you just give. Once you have given, you have done your job. Let the professional prioritize who should give, who should receive and who should not receive. Because they have different criteria in helping people. Sometimes if they're helping somebody who would, who would die anyway, then they, they might not do, the, do it if they have to choose between two persons. One person who will die anyway, and one person who will live, if you give them help, then you probably have to give priority to the person who will survive. Uh, saying enlightened people is also known as Arya. Yes, it's called Arya Pukala. In our chanting of the Sangha, Sangha, uh, quality uh, Aliya Pukala Isa Pakawato Sawaka Sanko Sawante Satu Satu Ayi, thank very much, Tanajan, for your guidance. Namaskar, Tanajan. You're welcome. Alexander Aroka. Follow the feeling and find the builder, the thinker. Soon we will understand anatta. Understanding anatta means that it is something like nature. It is not under anybody's control. It's like the wind, the rain, the sun, the moon. These are things these are anatta. There's no self, nobody controlling them or pushing them or stopping them. They just have conditions 
that cause them to be uh, to move. Surely, does hatred have no limit? Able to create maximum suffering to others, like the perpetrator of the current war. Yes. Hatred is the result of your your cravings, craving to do things that you you want to do, and when you cannot do what you want to do, you become angry, hateful, and craving has no limit. When the cause of craving, when the cause of hatred has no limit, then hatred has no limit. The cause of hatred is craving. When you get, when you crave for something and you can get, you cannot get what you want. You become angry, become hateful. And the more you want, the more hateful you become. Tan Muiki Ajan, your answers and guidance are very much appreciated, Satu Satu. You're welcome. I'm saying I am a regular blood donor, several times annually. The joy that arises within from being able to reduce suffering and preserve life brings more happiness than getting a lot of money. It's joy and merit, Prajan. That's right, that's what it is. Merit is joy, happy, happy feeling, good feeling. And contentment. Handy box. Good afternoon, Ajahn. May Ajahn be well and safe. Thank you. Alexander Aroka. Isn't the thinker a, a phenomena like the natural world? It is. It's one of the basic building blocks of the 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 world. There are six of them: the water element the earth element, the wind element, the fire element, the knowing element or the thinking element, and the sight and, and the space element. These are all natural things. There is no self in them. Pauling soon by practicing samatha and vipassana complete Ajahn said this way able to enlighten. This person, can I ask Ajahn other practice and this also able to bring enlightenment? I don't know of any other teaching or any other way of becoming enlightened except this method of samatha and vipassana with the support of morality of sila and dana. I'm saying thank you for clear explanation on merit, joy, happiness. You're welcome. Alexander Aroka Satu Being Tan in the form of emptiness, then we feel like living in dream every day. Yes, our life is just a dream. When you become enlightened, you will, then you will realize that you are living a dream. Then you stop dreaming. You stop doing things. You stop craving. You stop performing anything. And you're just becoming uh, someone who's who who know who understand the nature of dreams. What we do right now is a dream, because in a few minutes it will be past, and when you look back, it's, it is like something happened in a dream. Kathleen Pua Satu Satu Anumodana Mahajan Te Seng Hin Than Jan Thank you for your teaching and guidance. May you be well and healthy, Satu Satu. Thank you. You're welcome. Be Ling Tan Satu Satu.
Alexander Aroca. I am learning to seclude me from the world and the world and the world out of me. I am learning to seclude me from the world and the world out of me. Good. Stay in, in emptiness. Emptiness is the best form of happiness. Nibbana palamang sunyang, nibbana palamang sukang. Pauling soon in vipassana meditation is a must to contemplate three characteristics of existence. That's right, it is a must. Also the four noble truths, but they are connected. Once you investigate or study the three characteristics, you will undoubtedly also study the four noble truths at the same time because they are interconnected. We praise soon, Satu, Chi Chin Chuan, Dear John, I am unable to focus the breath at the tip of my nose. I will imagine and follow the air to my lung and out again. Is that wrong? Yes, it is not right because this will keep your mind busy. You want to, you want to steal your mind, so you have to watch at the tip of your nose. Or if you can feel the the breath and in your lung and your chest, then just stay, stay at the chest. Watch at the chest. Look, look, look at the chest when it expands and when it collapses. You can, you have to focus on one point. Don't move your mind. Don't move around. By moving, you will not be able to steal your mind. Uh, saying, Prajan, your presence, generosity to share your light of wisdom to drive our darkness of ignorance and matter makes a happy day for me, grateful to Triple Gem. Alexander Aroga, you told us that, and I keep it as a mantra keep my mind empty, it is safe and feels good. That's right, stay empty because emptiness cannot hurt you. It can only, it can only bless you. Bruce Lee Alamsaya, thank you very much for today's talk, dear John. Please have a good rest. I will have another talk in about an hour and a half. Today I have four, four, four sessions. This morning I gave one talk to a group of people who gave some some robes, some papa, what we call the bangsakula. Then now I'm giving this talk, and in about an hour and a half, I'll be giving another talk. And later tonight at 8 p.m., I will have another Q&A meeting in Thai. So today is quite a busy day for me. Anyway, it's good. The time passed by very quickly. The next thing I know, I'll be sleeping and wake up and go on by Bintabat and arms round again. Anyway, it's very good to see you all and answer your question. I hope that this can help you, make you understand better the teaching of the Buddha and help you advance in your practice. In the meantime, please stay safe Stay mindful, keep on practicing, and if all goes well, I'll see you all again at the same time next week. Thank you, and goodbye.